Hello everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis. Now, people who follow me will want to know about the concept art industry. So, art for video games, art for entertainment media like films in general, so there's a lot of things to learn from it and you might follow a lot of different artists and think there are certain styles and certain things I, I have to learn to adapt to that world. But there was one artist that stood out among a lot of different concept artists when I was going through my college days. And that's Richard Anderson, or he's better known as Flaptraps on ArtStation and his other social media. So what stood out for me was that despite the fact that he's in video games um, primarily uh, and he, he's also done films I believe, his style is more distinct. Now that's not to say there aren't things that are the quote-unquote traditional concept art type of look, but he brings certain things certain appeal that I feel a lot of the over-rendered concept artists kind of miss out. And that's good, solid design. Now, his style is deceptively simple. Um, it's more simplified than a lot of the super render stuff, but he has immaculate value compositions and he has a knack of creating a certain epic feeling with just very simple three value compositions. So I'll be talking about primarily on just revisiting the idea of making your compositions with three values. I'll also talk about the idea of overlap to create depth and why it's helpful when you're using a flatter, more designy type of style like this, and I'm going to talk a bit about texture too, though, even though I don't think that's the main selling point of Richard Anderson's work. So first of all, let's look into the three value composition. Now I've talked about this before. You do not want to create super complex stuff that will make you confused as you are painting. One way is to simplify your compositions in white, black, and a mid-tone gray. Imagine if your entire composition must be seen with these three values. No matter how tempting it is to put gradients everywhere and just give a soft little transition here and there, you want to have a very simple design element, a design composition rather, and you will be able to have it read properly before you start adding the details. So Richard Anderson's style has a very, in a way he simplifies a lot of stuff, but he still doesn't he doesn't break that sort of three value composition and one way again to look into this type of thing is really just zoom out when you're zooming out uh, of a painting or if you're doing a traditional painting you just walk backwards you realize you don't see any of the details anymore you only see things in very simple terms so, very, very simply, if I were to break down the composition like this, it would probably be something like this. Now, I might be a little bit off here, but bear in mind, I'm, I'm sort of going out know, and blindly. Something like that. So, as you can see, Three values are more than enough to create that 
feeling that you want in the composition. So right off the bat, when you look at this, you feel the sense of height. You feel that there's light. Uh, let's just fix it up a little bit here. Make it a little bit closer to what I've had. So you feel the silhouette here. Here, you can make it a triangle here. So without even putting any details, you see right away how three values could give you that mood that you want. You don't need anything more than this. Just that took maybe one minute, right? One minute to create this thumbnail and it says everything. Again, the sense of height, where the lighting is, where the focal point is. And then you can look at it and be like, mm, man, is this saying the message that I want it to say? Richard Anderson doesn't break anything here. When you look at this from far away, you just realize that the entire composition is just this. It's just adding a bit of texture to it. So if you were to develop it, then you start thinking about, okay, the light is coming here, so you can add a bit of lighting here, that sort of thing. And there seems to be a gradient here and such, right? And of course, you could break it down like this too, smoke coming out like this. So once you start with your very simple composition, that's when you can really just add more and more to it but ultimately it reads the same. I challenge you to look up this artist or any other artist uh, who is professional in this field and really break down every single composition they do into three values. You'll find that it is consistent throughout. They never really try crazy stuff and that's a good thing. I've said this in, other, in another video, I believe, but I'm going to repeat it again. We as humans cannot, we, we as humans see a lot of values in real life, but we cannot replicate every single thing, every single value we see, which is why in order to simplify the process, we only do it within three values to for this clarity's sake. Now, Maybe that will change in the future. Maybe they'll have technology where we can start having a ton of values in our work and replicate what we can see in real life. But for, for the sake of now, for the sake of the present, we're probably going to have to just go with what is going to work when it comes to illustration. So quite simply, the entire point of this video is just look at your work and think, can I break this down in three values? If you have too many complex things going on, then most likely you need to simplify your process. And it's much simpler than it seems. You don't need to really think too hard. And rendering, especially when you are inspired by a lot of the super rendered concept artists, they, they are deceptively too complex. And a lot of people kind of look on the fluff, on the all the details without really thinking backwards, sort of engineering backwards and seeing how the artist thought of the composition in the first place. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, the if you got one message out of my channel, just simplify. Always simplify. Now, second of all, I'm going to talk about overlap. So, given that his style is very um, designy, very shape-based, he has to use a lot of overlap in order to create depth. When you do overlapping, everything comes down to context. You must be able to give not only just overlapping shapes, but also you have to be able to make sure the details on those shapes make sense. So 
for, 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 I'm gonna go back a little bit. So first of all, you'll notice that all these buildings are sort of overlapping each other as they go backwards into the background. So as you can see, quite, quite simple. Obviously, if you were to look at a city and you're looking at it from a one point perspective, all the buildings will be overlapping each other by nature and that sort of thing. It's very basic. People kind of know from the back of their minds. Now, what's less uh, conspicuous is the fact that he has good detailing. And what I mean by good detailing is he makes sure that not only are these buildings overlapping, but these windows are, um, are also sized properly in order to create the sense of depth. And even if you zoom in here, you see that there's little little bits of light here to signify window lighting. Those little things will make a difference when it comes to creating a sense of depth. Now, it might not be an overlapping, more might be scaling. Uh, we could probably just change. But just note that you have to make sure that your details are going to make logical sense as they go into distance. It, and even if the values are very similar. So you notice that this building is not much different from this building. And that's because he wants to simplify the shapes and values in order to create a certain composition. He doesn't have to make these super uh, different in values, but his overlapping and his scaling of the windows are perfect so that it creates a sense of depth, even though the values are just are very similar to each other. And of course, the most obvious one would be the people on the background, uh, on the foreground, and as they go into the background, they get smaller. Human beings and anything that's relatable to humans are very good at creating um, depth. So one other way that a lot of concept artists do uh, put in their work is they use cars and sort of have cars in the foreground and cars in the background in order to create that sense of depth. Just things that will give a clue to give the illusion that something is going into space. Now, I'm going to talk briefly about texture as well. So, texture is something that is very personal. You don't want to copy anyone's textures, even though you might have artists that you want to um, be inspired by. But texture is something that is very personal because you are moving, uh, ultimately you are moving the way you move. Um, it's sort of like having a signature. Everyone's signature is different no matter if you have the same name. Even if you have the exact same name as Richard Anderson, you'll probably sign your name differently from him. So when it comes to texturing, you might notice that he makes use a lot with um, flat brushes and such. But I want to take a note at his use of a opacity here. Very, it's sort of like random. It's sort of like having giving a little bit of um, flair to it. It might not make a lot of sense and. It, there are certain things that are simplified, but again, it's up to the artist to be able to think of what they want when it comes to texture. And the way he moves is obviously going to be different than the way you move, even if you use the same flat brushes. So after you've established everything with the values and you have the perspective properly, you have the drawing properly, um, done properly, that's when you really think, okay, how do I move my brushes and my, um, in order to create that sort of texture that I want. Now, don't overthink it. Obviously, if you are, um, if you are just 
having fun with it, you'll create your own style and your own movements with your brushes. So one thing I, I did when I was starting out was I tried way too hard to copy some of my favorite artists like um, Richard Anderson and Ashley Wood. But you'll find out very quickly that if you try to copy exactly how they do things, then it just doesn't seem natural. And you might notice that if you watch any, any of them draw um, in reality, you'll realize that they don't even think about it. It's sort of like natural to them. And you want to capture that sort of natural feeling of your own way of doing things rather than trying to copy somebody else's natural way. Uh, this is why I, I'm not too keen on people trying to just use photo, other people's Photoshop brushes because there are certain things that are just very individual and brushes and texturing uh, are two ideas that just don't think too hard about it. Go with whatever works for you and just improve your fundamentals. Anyways, thank you for listening. I'll see you next time.